But if you'd like a list of these passages, I'll give you the list. Romans 12, verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Romans 13, verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Pursue love. Colossians 3, 14. Above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 11 through 12. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you to increase and to abound in love for one another and for all. 1 Timothy 6, verse 11. Pursue love. Hebrews 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. 1 Peter 1, verse 22. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. 1 Peter 2, verse 17, love the brotherhood. 1 Peter 3, verse 8, finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. 1 Peter 4, verse 8, above all, keep loving one another earnestly. In 1 John 3, verse 11, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. What message is being communicated again and again to Christians? Love one another. Pursue love. And, above all, put on love. When we think about the situation that was taking place within those first century congregations, those local church churches that Peter and Paul and others were writing to, when we think about that and why New Testament writers were always instructing them to love one another, why were they doing that? There were differences that existed between the brethren. There were ethnic tensions. In some of these congregations, there was a Jew-Gentile divide. All the differences that took place because of that. There were differences concerning eating meats. There were differences concerning spiritual gifts. And these differences often created tension among brethren. Tension that could cause ill feelings and strife and division. And as New Testament writers addressed these issues, what did they write about in the context of those differences? They wrote about love. Okay, there's differences in Corinth. Some of you are meat eaters, some of you are not. Some of you have the gift of tongues, some of you do not. There are differences. Pursue love. When the church at Corinth was divided over spiritual gifts, Paul put everything in perspective by writing about love. Here they are squabbling, and Paul writes, I'll show you an excellent way. And he goes on to write this. That if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. That's 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 4. Differences and tension existed in local churches in the first century. But Paul and Peter and others, John, wrote about love. Differences still exist among brethren today within local churches. churches. And perhaps you'll agree with me that social media has fueled the flame all these tensions. But have you noticed that many of the differences that exist rarely have anything to do with spiritual matters? You go on to Facebook and there's a person
person's opinion here and a person's opinion there, and there's tension created between brethren because of your opinion or my opinion, who are you going to vote for? Who am I going to vote for? And there's tension there. But these differences rarely have anything to do with spiritual matters. And so here we are with differences of opinions about worldly concerns. And if we're not careful, there could be what? There could be ill feelings. And there could be strife. And there could be division. So what's needed? Love. What Paul and Peter and John will write about is this. Above all, above everything else, all of these differences that divide you, all of these differences that fuel tension, they're down here. Above all of that, put on love. No wonder Paul used a series of verbs to describe what love does and what love does not do in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. When Paul's describing love, he's not telling us what love is in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. He's telling us what love does. Those are all verbs. If you want to grow in love, get busy loving the way it's described. Love is patient and kind. Love rejoices with the truth. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. All of those are verbs. Which is best for the church? Divisions over differences concerning worldly issues? Or loving others the way Paul describes here in 1 Corinthians 13, which is best for the local church. Let's increase and abound in our love for one another, and when we do, we'll greatly contribute to the work of the local church. So what can I do to contribute to the work of the local church? The points that we discussed this morning, these are things everybody can do. We can all grow in discipleship. Following Jesus with the purpose of learning from him and in order to be like him, we can all do that. All of us can grow in knowledge and all of us can grow in love. I know that we all love God and I know that we love his church. And so let's make sure that we're doing our best to contribute to the work of the church in this way. And when we do, this local church will benefit and God will be honored. So if you're here this morning and you have need to respond to the gospel, we want to provide you an opportunity to do that. But for those of us who are members of this local congregation, let's make sure that we're advancing the cause of the work here. And that's something that we can all be involved in. We can grow in discipleship. We can grow in knowledge. And we can grow in love. Let's do that together. As we